Welcome back, Warrior, to the Warrior Rundown, week four. Uh, alongside me, I've got Sean McAvoy and Chris Zulo. Um, a new addition to MCTV as of what, a week or two ago, right? Sounds about right, yeah. A couple of weeks ago. Uh, so finally, first episode of 2021. 2020 is behind us. We can finally move on to what's hopefully a better year than what was obviously a difficult one last year. Um, so first topic of the day, we got Merrimack basketball back this week. Um, starting play against who this week? I forget. Jake Hart. Thursday. Jake Hart. What do you guys think of that? I'm happy about it. I'm looking forward to basketball finally being back. I think they were probably the most surprising and, like, best team last year because if, uh, if Merrimack didn't have the ban for being able to play in national championships – Merrimack would have had a very good chance to be in March Madness as like a 16 seed. And so I, I'm i looking forward to it. I hope that they just keep rolling. I mean, yeah, I was a senior in high school last year, so I was just looking at the records of my buddies when we knew we were going to Merrimack. And, I mean, they did fantastic last year. And, I mean, seeing this come back now is just – it's beautiful because, for me, when it comes to college sports, I would say college hoops and maybe lacrosse are my top two just because of the intensity and the fast pace of it all. I, I really look at Look at it. Sorry, Chris, you go. What's that? Or no, who was just talking? Someone was just talking. I was going to look at Hello, Sean. Sean I, I, I agree with you, Chris. I think basketball has got really good intensity because even like watching like college football, stuff like that, I feel like in college football – it's just not nearly as competitive or anything as you see in like the NFL, but even like college hoops, especially like March Madness, it gets wild. Yeah, for sure. It's, I mean, it's, but it's, it's crazy. It's the best time of the year. Mm -hmm. Was that their first season as D1 last year? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that was 20, they went 20 and 11, which is pretty good. 14 and four in conference. I mean, that's like, yeah, for your first season D1, that's pretty crazy. Um, and then for more Merrimack sports, we got hockey back this week playing UMass Lowell, two games spurt. Um, they're one in three so far in the season, but they haven't been blowouts aside from that one game against Northeastern, which obviously wasn't great. But I mean, they've definitely been in this season. and They don't look, I, I think at least, they don't look like how their record shows. Um, but I'll toss it to you, Sean. What do you think? I know the hockey team has, like, a lot of good players. I agree with you that their record could definitely be better and probably should be. That blowout against Northeastern was kind of unfortunate because, like, even watching that, they were in it for a lot of the game. And then they just – they were up, like, 2 nothing. I'm pretty sure, to start that game. And then they just let up, like, five or six straight, which is just, like, they should have won that game or they shouldn't have let that kind of stuff happen. So, I think th I think their record should come around. I mean, yeah, as long as they don't let the doors open, you know, when you see something like that, five, six, like, what was it, unanswered at the yep. end of it all? I mean, that's that's crazy. Can't let that happen. But, I mean, if they're in it, they're in it. They just got to have their heads in the game. That's all it is. Their biggest issues in those games that I saw look to be uh, defensive zone turnovers and, um, like, penalty kills. They were they were getting a lot of penalties. I think, I think there was a couple power play goals. There might have been more than a couple even, but – I think those were the two biggest issues that I saw. I'm sure that Coach Boric is, is trying to turn around. I couldn't believe, honestly, watching that game that they didn't score more goals because I'm pretty sure by, I think, like halfway through the second period, there had already been 10 power plays in that game. And it was like two to one or something like that at that point. And I was just watching it like, holy crap, how have they not put up more against these kids? Yeah. Keeper unit needs to improve. Um, next up, we got fall sports returning to campus this spring. Um, so that means football is finally getting some games. Um, I don't know if there's going to be fans or not. I'm assuming, if I had to guess, there's probably not going to be. But even if, I mean, just the fact of sports being on campus, like we talked about a couple of weeks ago, on how just like the noise and the atmosphere of campus is finally going to be a little louder on the weekends. Um, it's exciting to hear. So what do you guys think about that? I think definitely, like you're saying, the atmosphere will be different. Even if there can't technically be fans, like 
I remember freshman year just sitting in Ash watching some of the games from my room, my friend's windows, like just looking out the window, you can see the football field and see like the game happening. So even if there can't be fans, people will still be able to see some of it. And just the fact that all these players are going to be able to get their chance to play, especially the freshmen who came to Merrimack and haven't gotten their chance yet. Like I'm happy for them. I mean, that's, it's, it's a hundred percent, hundred percent that, sorry. I mean, I went remote last year, right? Or last semester rather, and this semester as well, simply because there wasn't going to be that sort of atmosphere. And I mean, I'm sure Merrimack did everything they could to kind of produce that uh, artificially. But I mean, sports is just that one thing that's going to ultimately be the glue to hold together, like what rallies students together and gets everybody excited. So, I mean, here in this, whether it has fans or not, it's, it's, it's great news. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I mean, even like Saturday mornings, I think we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, right, Sean? But um, Saturday mornings are usually pretty quiet. So even just like hearing more than just like a small captain's practice going on is going to be something big, even if it's just the buzzers and whatever. Yeah, Saturdays, especially Saturdays, but even Sundays too, like just during the daytime, just nothing happening across campus. You don't really see anybody up and out at all. It's weird. Um, next up, Red Sox, um, turning to some more professional sports. Red Sox are going into 2020, 2021 season with the idea of having fans in Fenway Park again. So finally, hopefully we're over the curve, knock on wood. Um, we're hopefully towards that point where we can start getting back to normal, um, looking at fans in Fenway Park. So that's good to hear. I'm happy to hear that they're finally going to have fans, like they're going to have fans back because it is like a necessity not only for like not only for like the Red Sox and Fenway itself to be able to get that revenue from fans but just having that atmosphere at the games will be so much different I know people who with baseball and with basketball didn't want to watch these leagues like the NBA and MOB because there were no fans in the stands and they just thought that it just wasn't the same and they didn't want to watch because of it and so I think like I think it'll be good for the league to be able to show that they got people there. Yeah, that and I've been looking at like all the Corona like timelines with all the vaccine stuff and all that, just how it's going to play out and what we're thinking. I mean, I mean, people, a lot of people are saying like we could be like maskless again by like the end of summer, like closer to Thanksgiving. So, I mean, to say fans is like one thing, but like I'm, I'm really rooting for like, Let's get everything back to normal. You know what I mean? Back to normal. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Awful. I mean, that's just a dream right now. We're good. Um, so next up, we got Boston Bruins. So Dan O'Chara, obviously this offseason has been kind of tough for the Bruins, at least for Bruins fans. I'm sure that Sweeney hopefully has an idea in mind. Um, but at least the offseason from a fan's perspective for the Bruins has been kind of tough. And I think Chara leaving kind of caps it off. Um, 14 years he's been with the Bees, and I think, I mean, it's probably a no-brainer that he's going to get his number retired once he's uh, once he's out of the league. But, uh, yeah, Chara's gone. He's with the Caps now. What do you guys think? I think it's kind of wild. Considering 20 years old and Chara's been on the team for 14 years, he's been on the team for as long as I can remember. And similar to, like, a Brady, I always thought of, like, Chara as that guy for the Bruins, kind of like Ortiz would be the guy for the Red Sox and Brady would be like the guy for the Pats. So it's weird to see him going. I mean, yeah, I mean, the guy definitely put in all of his time, you know. It's uh, it's always tough to see, but he definitely put in his years. And, I mean, he's going where the better opportunity is. You know what I mean? So it's just – it is what it is, but it's definitely tough to see. I mean, I think definitely, like – he, he's old. I mean, and unlike Brady, no offense to Chara, but like Tom Brady is not like a normal guy. You know what I mean? And yeah. especially, I think it's especially tough in hockey as a sport, like a sport like hockey, where it's tough to be like an ageless wonder because eventually like you're getting, you're getting your body thrown around there all night. Like it's, it's kind of tough. So and yeah, your bones are, your bones are going to crack eventually. Yeah. So I think that them going the route with, some younger defensemen and him going the route of like, you know what, I'm going to help the caps out this year. I mean, the caps could be a contender if they really focus this year. So 
he might be he might be what they need and I mean I, I'm just happy that he's still playing and I'll I'll I guess I could be a bit of a Caps fan this season. <laughs> <laughs> I respect you swap. Yeah. Uh, next up, uh, Patriots. No playoffs for the Patriots this year for the first time since I was eight. So uh, there's no no Pats playoff football this year. What do you guys think? It's unfortunate, but uh, I'm happy they at least ended it on a good note. Nice win to end the season. I mean, it's it's god awful. It's, it's so much pain. Yeah. I mean, like, as a – I mean, we're all around the same age. I'm younger than you all, but, like, to to grow up in what is, like, this Boston sports dynasty and to see it sort of all kind of slip away through our fingers, like, as we're just sitting here, it's tough. In one year, yeah. There's My no denying that it's, like, the worst. Oh, yeah. My dad's been telling me, this is, like, the Patriots of the 90s. And I'm like, yeah, God, that sucks because – I've only heard bad things about the Pats in the nineties and I've only heard good things about the Bills in the nineties. And yeah. I don't really want the Bills to do well, but it's looking like they are right now. And I don't know. I know the Bills are the Bills are sneaky right now. Yeah. I'm happy like they're, they're doing I'm happy something off. The Pats. I'm looking for I think the Pats are a lot closer than it seems to be in like high level competing again. Cause this like this off season they have top three in the NFL in uh, what's it called salary cap so they can go out and get the receivers they need get the tight end they need get all the positions they need and oh man I, I feel bad for Cam Newton I think that he got a lot of hurt this year just because I think whoever was the quarterback was going to get a lot of hurt just because even sure. It's week 17 this week, and I'm still hearing stuff from the announcers like, oh, if Brady was here right now, this is what he would have done or something like that. It's like – it's like Tom Brady's been the quarterback for 20 years, so I mean, like, what can you do about it? People are still going to be saying stuff. So I I feel bad that he had to take all the hate. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think that he didn't have a whole lot to work with, and obviously the opt-outs on the defense just was a lot to deal with too. Has anyone been talking about where he's going to go? Because the, they're saying that the Pats are trying to part ways now, I heard. Yeah, Newton? I, I don't know. I don't think that he'll – I can't imagine that a team's going to pick him up as yeah. a starter, at least. I think he'll be a backup if we see him at all. Yeah. I don't – I can't think of a team that he could start on right now, especially with the draft class coming up with Justin Fields and Trevor Lawrence. I don't know. I feel like there's going to be a lot of QB movement this offseason with, like, Dak Prescott – Hopefully, Matt Stafford to the Pats. Mm. Or Jameis Winston. No, no Jameis Winston. Ah. Hey, he got his eye surgery, and he's been playing by Drew Brees, most accurate passer of, like, all time. He should pick up a thing or two. Taysom Hill's been playing under Drew Brees. Winston's been playing under, under Taysom Hill. But I guess we'll see. Uh, now we got the after show, so I'm going to toss it to Sean and just say a sports topic on your mind and talk about it for a few seconds, and let's get the ball rolling here. Yeah, so uh, talking about the Patriots and Cam Newton and everything a little bit, I'm, I'm happy to hear that uh, Schefter was reporting that Cam Newton's going to be gone and everything like that, but Belichick, he, didn't, he said to the media, he was like, when did I say this, or when did anything like this happen? Was this a report from somewhere? Because we didn't say this. So that's uh, kind of curious. He's been, a, he's been an angry guy lately. Did you guys see the, uh, uh, the clip of him slamming the phone against the thing? That I, I laughed very hard at that. Oh, yeah. I saw that in when I was in the game, and I was like, yeah, no. I can't say the word, but I'm just yeah. saying, like – Obviously, he's going to be slamming his phone. There was such an obvious, like, do not challenge this play. And whoever the guy was up in the box that told him to challenge does not have a job right now. There's almost no doubt in my mind. Oh, he's gone. Uh, he is, for sure. He is, like, what do you guys think about uh, Philly? Eagles taking out Jalen saying, oh, they were trying to win that game by taking out their good quarterback and putting in Sudfeld. I, I'm, it, it's so ridiculous. It is so – I, I run out of work. It makes me so frustrated just to, like, see something like that happen. 
And then like to see that sort of backlash it gets and for the people who are involved in making that decision to like still not get it. Mm -hmm. I just like crazy. Obvious, like it seems obvious, I guess. I mean, and why would you bench Hertz? Like, but I also will say this. um, I will say that the Giants have no room for getting mad about they, missing the playoffs when they only won six games all season. Like, yeah. no offense to Washington, but the fact that Tommy Brady is going to Washington to play a wild card round when he had like what six more wins is laughable. So yeah. I think that that's a big issue with like the whole NFC East is just trash. But I thought uh, I thought Colin Coward for once said something really funny and true about the Eagles that. He said that even if the Eagles are trying to tank to get a better draft pick, he said, either way, all they're going to be doing is going from drafting, say, the best cornerback to maybe the best defensive back. Either way, their entire team sucks and it doesn't matter. Yeah, especially <laughs> with sure. Hurts probably leaving this season. Yep. Thanks for tuning in to the first 2021 edition of the Warrior Rundown. Alongside Sean McAvoy and Christopher Zullo, I'm Matt Gagnon. Thanks for watching and keep tuning in for the rest of the semester. Thanks, guys. I'm going.